everybody, and welcome to the Texas 24 podcast on the Dave Campbell's Podcast Network. I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Ishmael Johnson. Ish, how are you doing this Monday afternoon? I'm doing good. Uh, it's a little weird because it's the week one of college football, and so we got to kind of pause again to kind of re re uh, re re turn around. I guess I don't know, adjust our focus a little bit to kind of steer back to basketball for a quick second. Exactly, exactly. But we continue our coaching series uh, this week with North Texas basketball men's basketball head coach Grant McCaslin. Coach Mac, how are you doing this afternoon? Ish, Bruni, what a treat, man. <laughs> you know, Ish, I really like you, but Bruni, we've got we've been through too many wars together, too many arguments, oh, that's, that's your boy. and agreements. He, we've, we've, uh, it feels yeah. like old times, man. He's he's big and famous now, though, so he doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> I got you right here. Our anymore. There Look it is. Got, got you right there, man. That was a nice. man. The, the ups and downs of the whatever had the four years we were there. Oh, um, I was you there. Saw um, all of it. Man, crazy. And last year, obviously, was my first year here at LSU, and y'all go out, go twenty-five and seven overall. 16 and 2 in conference USA. I mean, I watched every game obviously. Regular season champs and incredible season coming off of that prior season where like I said in the picture right there where you have Javion, Reese and Zach all, you know, graduate transfer. I mean, I guess we'll start off here. What was last year like for you uh just overall to have to, you know, reshape things and y'all still end up winning the conference in the regular season? Yeah, well, you know, and I think probably the most difficult part of that spring was uh, our good friend Nelson Haggerty passing away, you know, who was a part of our staff, but more than anything was one of my best friends. Um, but to be able to honor him with the way we competed, I, th I think said a lot about the program. Uh, we just love he and his family. And so that was tough, one. And then two, when you springboard into the season after having an NCAA tournament success, which is the first time in school's history, and then you have a pretty significant turnover in the major contributors to that team that built that up. And obviously, Mardrez McBride uh, returned, who had played. Uh, Ruben Jones had played. Abu Usman had played. But then you were just trying to figure out who the key pieces of that were going to be. And what we ultimately decided was – we were going to go with the guys that had been a part of the program the longest, J.J. Murray, Thomas Bell, who were not only our most experienced players, they'd won the most games in our program, but they were also the best defenders on our team. And so kind of adapted it uh, to those, added Tyler Perry, which obviously ended up being a, a significant part of our program, and Aaron Scott. I mean, those are the two guys that played the most minutes. And – and I think there was just a commitment to figuring out what gave us the best chance to win every game, and it was our defense. And Coach Hodge, as you know, um, who ended up being TABC Assistant Coach of the Year, but he was Coach of the Year, I think, in any form or facet with yeah. what we were able to do. I mean, winning 16 games, and, you know, a couple of our early season losses was to Kansas and Miami, who ended up playing each other in the Elite Eight to go to the Final Four, which ended up being, I guess, two pivotal games for us in kind of learning about ourselves in that ESPN tournament. Um, just really a committed group. And, Bruni, you know J.J. Murray. I mean, literally, he's a ninja. I mean, probably the best defender I've ever seen. He and a guy named Adrian Van Buren, a.k.a. Scooby, the best two on-ball defenders I've ever coached. Uh, Scooby won a national championship with us at Midland. And he changed the game with the way he guarded the ball. It's the same way with J.J. I mean, just believed in our program, believed in each other, and there was nobody that worked harder. And then we all witnessed it. Thomas Bell completely changed that Purdue game when we won in the NCAA tournament, and he did it with his defense. Even though he scored a lot in that game, his block shots at the end of that game, his rebounds, I mean, just uh, he in his own right has – amazing ability to impact the game in so many different ways. So we just tried to figure out a way, like how do we manage the game offensively, but how do we win it with our defense and led the nation in points allowed um, slowest tempo in the country. Uh, but it equaled wins for us. And not until Ruben Jones got hurt, you know, at the very end of the season, we really were consistent with our ability to win games and how we were going to do it. And our identity was based around winning. I mean, people want to say, like, hey, do you wish you could? I mean, everybody wants to 
play a tempo that I think creates opportunities offensively. But we felt like what gave us the best chance to did to win was controlling the game. Yeah, looking at the, I was actually about to ask about the tempo. You know, it's how do you get a lot of guys to buy into that? Because obviously, a lot of these guys come from high schools where they're probably the most athletic guy on the court, and they're running up and down the field. They're probably or the court. They're probably used to getting in transition, things like that. How do you get the guys to kind of buy into? I don't want to say doing the opposite of that necessarily, but like buying into a system and to being more methodical and to actually like waiting for the right pass and the right opportunity to score. It should is football season, so the field reference isn't going to bother I, me. Uh, yeah, right, right. Right. Hey, the, the Mean Green got a big win at UTEP in week week true, two. True. Let's go. I'm excited true. about our team. I really love our program and where we're headed right now. Uh, I was with uh, Coach Bennett back in the day, and my brother actually played high school football for his brother, Jim Bennett. So oh, okay. big fan of what Coach Luttrell is obviously doing. We're their biggest uh, support here. We love what – I think our team has. I love our defense. I love our offense. I think we're going to be good. So side note, um, <laughs> but just I think what we've done is we've put the priority on winning. And so when you say you recruit to the system and we we scored in our first season here like 90 points in four out of the five games in the CBI, um, I, I just believe like what we put the emphasis on is who wants to come be a part of a championship program i mean who wants to win and i and but we've also had jv on was conference usa player of the year so it wasn't like it's short on accolades i mean he was athlete of the year uh and first team all conference tyler perry was last year so i, I think you know and in, in his first season abu uzman was all conference aaron scott was all freshman team so it doesn't it comes winning brings opportunities for everybody and i think the, the part we've just tried to emphasize is how do we maximize who we have and what we are. And I do think, honestly, we'll have the opportunity to play play with more pace this year. Um, and the reason why I think that is because I do love our depth at the playmaking spots. I really do. I mean, yeah. I just, we've got guard play and we've got depth at the forward spot. And to take advantage of our length and athleticism with this roster, we just need to create more opportunities on both ends, where it be defensively and offensively. And last year, I did feel like our talent level with what we had was really best when we kept a particular group on the floor. And you just can't wear out J.J. Murray if you're going to run up and down because it's it doesn't fit him. You know, I mean, just an elite defender, but the more he started sprinting, and if you watch Thomas Bell run, and I love Thomas, trust me, for life, I love Thomas, but he's not a great runner. And so it just took a lot out of both of those guys the more we created uh, transition opportunities. And it's not to say they couldn't do it, but we were better when we were putting people in position. So you ask, how do we do it? I mean, more it's like this year we recruited to, I think, play a little quicker. And so that was a part of the recruiting scheme because we felt like with our returners, um, we Ruben Jones can really go. I mean, he can really push the basketball. He can play in the open floor. And we feel like our roster is better fit for doing that this year than it was last year. Yeah, I mean, you look at the the 2020 team and 2021 teams like, you know, Javion, Reese, and go down the list of, of the amount of talent you have on those teams. And obviously last year's team was talented, but the, the way y'all were able to play that style to, so well – to go 16 and two in Conference USA, which I mean, as we know, I mean, Conference USA is one of the best mid major conferences in the country. Uh, wh what did that say? And what was it like as a coaching staff for you, Coach Hodge, Coach B, all of them, all of y'all, to be like, no, we really, really have to play this style. And if we play it this way, we're going to be, you know, we're going to have a chance of winning the conference. And I, what it started with was watching a couple of years ago, watching the Virginia Texas tech national championship game, right? You look at those two teams and they were just defensive, tough, Punch found their identity you know. offensively. Right. I mean, it, and, and they found a way to maximize every possession. And that's what it basically boiled down to is like, how do we maximize every possession? Um, and by having JJ and Thomas on the floor defensively, it, it did have its limitations offensively, right? I mean, uh, because JJ could shoot, he could finish, and he was tough and a great driver, but he great wasn't cutter a real, too. Huh? Great cutter too. 
Oh, mm-hmm. tremendous. But he just he just filled every gap that what you needed. And and Thomas wasn't a great perimeter three point space mm-hmm. the floor drive you decision maker. He was good when you could find him in positions to get closer to the rim. Our foul rate was better than it's ever been since we've been here. Uh, we just struggled to make free throws. Thomas kind of went through that stretch where it was difficult for him, and it wasn't for lack of effort. I mean, Thomas tried to work on his shot and kind of messed it up during the middle of the season, which made it hard. But we got fouled. We played through Abu on the post, and then we had the closer in – Tyler Perry, which when you gave him the ball in the middle of the floor, and this is what you know in watching us, is when you have someone that can shoot when people go under ball screens or you can isolate people in the top in the middle of the floor, man, it just makes closing games easier. But you can't do that for 40 minutes. It's just too much on them to go down there and create everything in the middle of the floor. So looking at it, um, we did feel like we got picked sixth by the coaches, and, and I would have – picked us there if you just look at returning players on our roster but ultimately i think drez and everybody really helped to to buy in to winning as the priority and that's what went into us deciding to do that was like when you get in championship basketball championships are won in the trenches just like it is in football you're one at the line of scrimmage and felt like if we could win you know every possession and maximize it whether the score was in the hundred to hundred or whether it was 40 to 40, the goal was to win. <laughs> I don't mean to simplify it, but that's what we were about trying to do. How about the talk a little bit about kind of managing last year, obviously the year before you have Hamlet and, you know, his way to operate off screens and operate in the lane and, you know, that signature floater of his going from that to Tyler Perry, who you know came off the bench and, you know, as a sixth man and different type of score, you know, as you mentioned, his range, what did that kind of do for like some of the rhythms of the game? Because obviously, you know, you guys are waiting for that first time out to kind of really get him in the game. And, you know, you have your certain set offense with that without him with the starting lineup. What did that kind of do for the rhythm to go from, you know, kind of a, a traditional floor operator the year before to maybe somebody who's off the bench and kind of a, a rhythm kind of guy? Yeah, uh, you know, the emphasis was more on getting getting forward touches around the rim. So like mm-hmm. getting – Thomas involved in what we call dribble downs, which now I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to think of the correct way to say this. No, it, it was uh, dribble downs. It was, it well, I'm just saying, it's not the most visually pleasing way to play the game. Yeah. yeah. Because it limited the ball movement. But the, the point, as you know, of really good offense is how do you get the ball to the paint? Hmm. Like you got to get the ball to the paint. You got to figure out a way to stress the rim and find a way to get the ball close to the rim so that, that way that you have the opportunity. It's like the tough two dilemma. Like how do you get to, how do you get someone that can score twos to collapse it so that you can get open threes? And if you look at our three-point percentage, it was really good. But if you're just always spraying it and shooting it without getting paint first, then your percentages go way down. So we really tried to figure out like how are we going to get to the paint? And our best – way to do it and you said it with Tyler it's not to say he can't get in the paint but Mm -hmm. his but his ability to shoot really stretch defenses Dredge's ability to shoot really stretch defense Ruben's ability to shoot great shooter but also can handle was but we figured like if we can get Thomas and Abu closer to the rim to score that it would really open up more opportunities for them as as opposed to the reverse which it maybe it was with Hamlet but it was also with Zach I mean we that was our counter punch if you went back and watched this play, it was like we'd throw it into Zach or we'd let Javion operate uh, in that middle ball screen area. And so the more we looked at it, we felt like paint touches would come through Thomas and Abu mostly. And then we would utilize the ball screens to get paint touches and to create angles. Um, but felt like the dribble down was a key component to the flow of our offense uh, or lack thereof flow. Um <laughs> And, and and honestly, Thomas is a really good passer with his left hand, and he was good, and we worked on it because part of this too is, you know, Thomas had earned in our program the opportunity to be the best player. I felt like mm-hmm. it because he'd been with us for two years. He was a part of an NCAA tournament team, and then he was a part of a team that won a championship and didn't get to go to the NCAA tournament. And then he was a super senior, and he could have transferred. Yeah. And I was like, dude, you want to come back? We'll help you learn how to be a key contributor, not just a role player. And we were trying to find ways to make him an impact player where he was a playmaker. And it just, the farther we got him away from the basket, 
the decision making wasn't as comfortable. But the closer he got with that left hand, because he was a great passer, a really good passer, he just didn't grow up making plays and it wasn't supernatural for him. So we had to drill that dribble down action to get him foul trouble, to get other teams in foul trouble, to get the ball to the paint so that we could have another way to get paint with our team. And we just felt like that was the best way to do it and honored his commitment to our program. And it worked. I mean, 16 and two was the best record in our league since Cal was at Memphis. You know, I mean, it was, uh, we we were the last team that was undefeated in the country on the road. No one was. Yeah. So, yeah, I was going to say, it's definitely uh, as much as, you know, it felt pieced together at times offensively. You finished the year on Kempom with the third best offensive efficiency in, in the conference. I mean, 30, 40% from three. You go down the list, it's just like, okay, no. It's, well, it worked. It worked. If we just if we made free throws, I think it would have been yeah. the number one conference in the league. I mean, if you just could shoot 70%, but our, our, our free throw shooting was so abysmal, you know, that it uh, really hurt our ability to stretch away in games, right? Yeah. And, now, um, I have two questions. First, um, has Ho- has Coach Hodge calmed down at all <laughs> since, since I've been gone? Is, is, it, is it still 10 every single practice, every single minute with him? What do you think? <laughs> I'm just worried about him. I'm worried about him. I feel like he's just – No, dude, he, he, he's old. got a great way about him. You know, he's got a great family, and uh, I am blessed – uh, to work with him every day. And I mean it. And you know that, man, because I think, Bernie, you can't have the expectation you have every day like he does to compete at the highest level to win a national championship. And he wouldn't say that publicly, but that's our heart is how do we win a national championship at North Texas? If you don't compete with that end in mind, um, but not have a, but your relationship is lacking off the court with the players, it, it won't, it does, it doesn't work. And I honestly believe this and you know this, like he has a genuine way to connect with our guys that they know that he loves them. It's not about basketball. And that's the thing that we fight for every day is we fight for how to give perspective that this is bigger than basketball. And there's more important things when it comes to life than playing basketball. And I know that sounds like, well, you don't love, you know, like it's just not everything. You know, we try to live that and model it, that we want to be great husbands. We want to be great fathers. We want to be great friends. And we want our guys to have the same mentality that they aren't defined whether a basketball goes through the hoop. They're just not. And if they are defined by that in their lives only, it's it's going to be a disaster ultimately. So we just try to make it bigger than basketball. And there's nobody better than connecting those dots than Coach Hodge. You know, he's committed to figuring out. He just touches them every day through text messages, through phone calls, through coming over to his house. He just has a way to connect that doesn't have anything to do with basketball that I think they trust him with the basketball integrity that he holds them to, that he holds all of us to, you know, because, you know, he and I get to it on the sideline too. Oh, yeah. Um, he got more technicals than I did this year, just so I'm clear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dang. Yeah, I, gotta, I got. We got bench text. Back. I'll take the technicals. I'm just saying for your, just because we're friends, Bruni. I'm going to give some little nuggets here that nobody knows. But yeah, he's he's contributed to the technical total that probably gets tagged to our name. Yeah. Um, is there is there a bet? Is there a bet there? Is like, does he buy you lunch the next day? What's what's going no, on there? I don't need nobody buying me lunch, man. Let's be <laughs> honest. We got we got we got we got enough we got enough things going on around here. He's entitled to. Uh, to get out there and get after it. You know, he's, yeah. I mean, the dude's got a 90% win percentage as a head coach. I mean, there's nobody that wants to win more than him. There's nobody that loves North Texas basketball in the mean green and more than, more than him. And he's connected to winning, man. It helps us win. You know that. Yeah, it does. He knows when to, he know he has too much experience. He knows when to, when to prod. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's talk a little bit about this year's team. Um, before we, I mean, get into the newcomers, even, Aaron Scott, freshman last year, big piece of what y'all did. I mean, basically the true, like, seventh man for y'all uh, last year. Played a huge role, rebounding, showed offensive skills. Um, him and Ruben are the two I want to start with because, obviously, Ruben's progression from freshman to sophomore year and now going into year three. What have you seen from those two as they go into to this year? Yeah, and I've actually been able to look back historically at the guys that have made impacts as freshmen, and I think we've pared it down to, 
you know, Aaron Scott's ability to know what our team needed and fill in the gaps at a young age is really unbelievable. Like his offensive, defensive understanding of not only what he's supposed to do, but what other people are supposed to do and how it fits into winning. It's just, he's got a great basketball feel. I mean, really elite. It's the same thing with Ruben. Like Ruben gets more excited when other people dunk in games. Like he'll be on the sideline, not be the one throwing the lob, but we have video of him like running and cheering. And like, he just is so connected to winning. And I think those two guys share that in common, like their feel for the game. I don't know, Bernie, you maybe remember his freshman year. He came in and like threw a behind the back on a dime to somebody in the corner. I was like, hold he on. Came in throwing, he came in throwing flashy passes sometimes. And Colin and I were just like, oh, man, I don't know if McCaslin, I don't know if Grant can be OK with this. man." <laughs> well, obviously, he didn't do it in games. But it's not to say that it just it just goes to show you like his reactions as a part of the game are really. But sometimes that would lead to the other side of it, which, you know, like playing with two feet on the ground is just more effective. And you start playing off one foot and it just there's too many good athletes on the floor in college and the way that people are constructed and the way the shot clock runs. There's not a lot of those opportunities. Um, he'll get more of them. I just to your point, though, with Aaron and with with Ruben and their progression, Aaron got here and didn't necessarily understand the physicality at which the game needed to play through experience, but he learned quickly what was required to help the team. Like he would, he would improve every day really quickly. And he's got a, actually a very unique personality, kind of like Ruben, they're reserved. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not like he was boisterous. It's not like he was out there talking and playing defense. You're like, wow, this is – we knew this would translate. Um, but he was persistent in his approach, and he had some rough moments early where he – I have just mental pictures of him sitting on the sideline before practice because he forgot to eat breakfast, and he showed up to practice. And Coach Wright's like, do you eat breakfast? And he's not one of those guys that's like malicious. He's just like, no. And he's like, what are you doing, dude? You know, like, you get, so he's sitting on the sideline, pinching his nose, eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich before practice, 10 minutes before practice. I'm just like, it's <laughs> seared into my mind. And so I'm just laughing because you know that. Like pro, like J.J. Murray, dude, he got up at like six, ate, cooked like probably five eggs and steak, yeah. and then – lifted early and then was in the gym shooting at 7 a.m. and then was studying yeah. engineering at 8 and then at 8:30 yeah. he was getting his first shooting routine then we were practicing at 9 then he was doing treatment like he just was like a pros pro all the way through so just Aaron was just showing up like didn't have his shoes you know just yeah. like just trying to learn what it meant to compete and everything like in the trainer room. So I'll just tell you that those guys really had a heart to win and try to figure out both of them. He and Ruben both, really, both really under could look at the game and say, this is how I can win. And one example that really turned our season was the Drake game. It's the third game. It would have been our third loss in a row if we'd have lost to him in on, on ESPN in Orlando. And, you know, you get fatigued when you play those three games in four days and, Aaron Scott played unbelievable in that game. And Ruben had played really good in that game because uh, Tyler Perry was actually sick uh, in that game. And people didn't know, but he had some stomach stuff. And that's why we ended up losing the end of the Miami game. He had some free throws at the end. You could just tell he just wasn't himself. And then in that game against Drake, there was a point where they shot fake a lot in the paint. And Aaron Scott left his feet and he wasn't supposed to on the scouting report. You know how we are about scouting reports. And I'm not joking. As he's coming down off the floor, he's looking at me like, my fault, my fault, my fault. He didn't even hit the <laughs> ground yet, you know? And the guy, like, up and under him and got fouled, and he was already saying, my fault. So it's like the understanding and the way he was so connected to winning, and because of that, he, like, took strides so quickly, man. We just started putting him in games. And that game we won against Drake because of him. He made, like, a, a big – uh, corner three, I think, or made like a baseline shot. He was like hooping. He had a dunk against Miami. It was just like you could tell his confidence was growing because he could see what he needed to do to help the team. And both those guys are that way. Was there was there kind of a uh, recruiting strategy as far as size? Because I feel like top to bottom, this is the top biggest team you've had. And all the guys you brought in, 
you know, they're, you know um, uh, they're not all incredibly big. You know, I think there's a couple six, three, six, fives in there. But like, regardless, it adds to like a more lengthy team compared to your previous. Was that something you guys were cognizant of or did that just kind of happen to like be the way the roster filled out? No, it did. We, we'd like to, um, you know, every offseason, I think you got to evaluate when you get to the end of the year, like what you could have done better. And last year was unique, I think, because of the, the passing of Coach Hag and just going to the NCAA tournament. It was just it, 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 it happened a lot faster and we lost some pretty key pieces. So you don't I mean, like maybe the identity was like, are we going to keep doing what we're doing? I don't know if we had clear direction, you know, it was like, like who, who's who's going to fit in this. And we loved Aaron Scott. Obviously, we love Matthew Stone. We think he's got a chance to be really good, just needs those opportunities to play in games. But just looking at that team, you know, Tyler ended up being obviously significant Drez. I think with this one, we knew that we'd like to be able to play more guys and find different ways to do it. So we've tweaked some things. We're looking at some things offensively that will be different with this team. And we felt like, to your point, that if we could get some more size defensively and get a little more depth and the, the versatility of the guards. I don't know. If you go back and watch the Virginia game, at the end of that game, because Tyler was kind of hurt, we didn't have Ruben, and Drez – was playing so many minutes. Like I, we started putting JJ in ball screens and he started like throwing unbelievable pocket pass passes. Like just like there was an improvement. So I thought back, just like, how do we improve our team all year long? Like, how do we play a few more guys? How do we have more depth at the end of the season? So I think there's part of it is like coming up, formulating a system more that we can play more guys early and trust them more to make plays and for there to be some, some improvement individually and as a team as the season goes on. So, yeah, I mean, it all comes down to people and who you have relationships and who you feel like will actually come to North Texas. And I don't mean that like this isn't a great place to be because we do feel like we've got a top top program in the country in basketball. We really do believe it. We do our we love our university and we love where we're going and we feel like we're we're ready to take that next step. Yeah, it's, it's nice to say that as you're right next to a wall full of like championship <laughs> signs and trophies right here. Like, there's more of them as we like spin here. around. There you go. There just, you go. Show, well, us, show us the whole. <laughs> we'll just we'll just leave it a little little a little taste. It, it's been awesome, and we've got <laughs> you know this man. The administration has to be behind you to be great. Um, you know, I just told our guys. I mean, the expectation that they come in with now is is different than what we were trying to help promote and uh we just we're gonna try to operate like we're gonna compete for a national championship and you know this and basketball it's really difficult to do in football it really is man just because of the way the system's set up but in basketball you make it to the ncaa tournament i mean 68 teams mm -hmm. yep it's neutral um, games kind of just go play yeah i mean even when it's not neutral and it's in indianapolis and you play purdue there you That's go there you go um all right uh Looking at the four transfers, obviously I don't need full scouting reports on on all of them, but just as as a whole, uh, Sissoko, Jaden Martinez, uh, Tyree Eady, Kai Huntsbury, um, the last three I named are all seniors. Uh, Sissoko's a sophomore. Uh, forgive me if I forgot anybody. I'm, I think I got them. But um, of those four, what do they bring just as a whole to this team uh, going into this year? Yeah, and then we signed Christian at the end, uh, who's yeah. a high school player, um, but – yeah, Christian's going to be awesome for us too. And I, so broad perspective, we feel like if you look at Kai and you went and watched him on Synergy and Tyree, like they both have a great feel for the game. Like they're not one dimensional in any way. They're great teammates. They have size, they have versatility. Tyree can shoot threes and he's, he's, he, you talk about dribble down. He's got some of that to his game. Uh, Kai Huntsbury is, physical guard he's got some jv on physicality to him he's actually better in transition and we just kind of keyed it around how do we get more guys involved in the offense you know like it's not to say we won't keep the ball in particular guys hands when it's time to win the game but i do feel like that we needed to have more involvement as a whole and my buddy at arizona tommy lloyd and you know jeff lenders who's one of my best friends at wyoming and then ben mccollum is at northwest missouri i mean i just talked to those guys a lot in addition to the staff at baylor and just feel like we've got to create some 
opportunities in transition. So Mulai and, and Jaden, I mean, those two guys can put pressure on the rim, but they also have size and length. Mulai is the fastest guy on our team and Jaden can make three. So you just add some versatility and length and, you know, maybe some of that, those transition opportunities, we can put pressure on people as opposed to maybe what we've done in the past and it takes more guys. And so we just added, I think some versatility. Jaden's versatile can play a lot of positions and with Aaron Scott being really good at the guard and forward spot, I mean, we just got a lot of length and athleticism out there, you know. And really with T Tyler being the, you know, the only guy that doesn't have a tremendous amount of length, but obviously has got a big heart and can make big shots. Yeah. Um, lastly, well, I have two, two questions here. First, Tyler Perry, uh, you kind of mentioned him. I go from a year where he's coming off the bench and obviously he's still – pretty one of the guys last year um but to go into this year with the year under his belt in y'all system what what have you seen from him just over the off season and how he's approaching this year and now that he knows what y'all expect knows what he has to do knows what it takes to win a conference you say just what have you seen from him uh the biggest thing is i love tyler because he really cares about people like he really does man he he got invited to uh Formula Zero, Dame, Damian Lillard, uh, Phil Beckner uh, had a had a, a, a you know an opportunity to go learn the game. I just think you know this: the maturation of learning uh, that everything matters. You know, I mean, like you just have to approach everything with that kind of mentality. And I think that was a big step for him. And JJ and Thomas really helped him learn that just because he saw how hard those dudes worked. I mean, if you knew how, you know, how much time those guys spent in the gym and how prepared they were. Honestly, it was to the detriment of Thomas. He spent so much time shooting that it kind of started messing with his ability to actually, he needed more specific game reps. And that's where his game is going to continue to get better as a pro because he really means a lot. But I think he just learned all those details and it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard, right? And and especially early in the season, this, it can be difficult but I think our system will help him rely on other people so he doesn't feel like he has to be like, I'm the best player. Like we know he's he's the leading scorer uh returning and has the key ingredients to win games when it matters. He's unbelievable, man. The plays he can make at the end of games, you know, there's a trust. And so I think that'll help us, but I don't think he needs to fill the load like he has to save the day. And and I think he knows that and we can utilize a lot of the teammates. So he's really matured in his approach, in his daily approach to eating, to sleeping, to preparing. And I think that is going to show out in his leadership. And I don't know if it'll matter at the beginning, but I do know that the long part, I think he'll be more prepared for the end of the season. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I have is uh, Conference USA, obviously 11 teams now, and it looks as tough as it ever has uh, from top to bottom. I mean, you know, go down the list, you know, UAB, West Kentucky, Middle Tennessee. La Tech will always be good. Uh, UTEP, we, just, we had Joe Golden on a few weeks ago. Um, he looks ready. Just uh, at conference as a whole, are you, are you looking forward to the battles that you're going to have once again this year? Yeah, I mean, we've had different scheduling models every year I'm here, I feel like. So just yeah. the round robin, I'm excited about that. I mean, I, I know a lot of people can have a lot of opinions, but just the true road home, you know, it'll get a little tricky with when you play people and where and, you know, where in the schedule and what your rest components are. But for the most part, I'm excited about the round robin. You know, you get everybody at home in a way. Um, obviously, you said it, Joe's done an unbelievable job at UTEP. I mean, they, we just got great coaches in this league. I'll tell you, it'll be good. FAU will be good. Yeah. They return. Yeah. They were sneaky good last year. No, oh, dude. I mean, we, we had a war. Yeah. Uh, at their place to win that game. And Thomas makes a big play around the rim on that dribble down stop stuff that yeah. nobody liked, but he scored a big basket to win the game. And that's where you just, they, JJ came up with a loose ball, dove on in the middle floor and Thomas made a layup to Matt to win the game. And then made a free throw went one for two and we win the game. Just, I think that's our program. If you'd say anything about it, it's just, we're excited to compete for championships and our league is great, man. Obviously, I mean, you mentioned all the teams. I don't need to mention them, but just great coaches, fun environments. And, um, you know, it'll be it, – they're not 14 teams. I think that, that that number is difficult at our level when you, you're looking at limited amount of bid opportunities. You know, and to have this, I do think the strength of schedule could go up 
with this year's team, which I think will ben every, benefit everybody when it comes to seeding and the opportunity to opportunity to win games in the NCAA tournament, which is what everybody wants to do. Yes, sir. Well, all right, Coach. Um, well, you were you you went to Wichita. I was going to ask: Is can you get Shannon Short or any more eligibility, man? <laughs> man, I think there's a lot of guys on that team. Yeah, I, I was just <laughs> those from, three dude. guards. <laughs> Woo wee! Find a man, way, man. Andre Shaw uh, and and Clay did an unbelievable job with that team, man. I was so excited for JJ and DJ and Mike Miller and you know Zach. I mean, all those guys that played on that Thomas. Obviously, just it was so cool, man. I mean, I can't tell you what joy that brought me to see all that come together, man. You know, DJ and JJ are like sitting in my living room, calling me every day. It just, there's a lot of people that have given a lot to this program, including you, Bernie. I'll give you credit, man. You just helped elevate our program in, in a lot of ways. And you know, with this, man, it's just like, there a lot of work goes into this to make it great. And I think you appreciated it. And I think those guys appreciated being a part of it. And I appreciate being a part of it, man. It's bigger than me. It's bigger than you. I think Mean Green Basketball and Mean Green Athletics has a lot of potential, and we're realizing it, and we're actually becoming one of the best programs in the country. And I think that part of it, I think, brings a lot of people joy in that TBT experience and those guys getting a chance to do it. Just, I mean, it just shows you the quality of people I think that we have here. It's, it's underestimated, honestly. Yeah. You know, Dre being our operations guy is as good a coach as, as I am. I just think there's – a lot of great people are part of this and people just waiting for their opportunity to show it. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll talk to JJ and DJ about getting me as an assistant coach next year. <laughs> I, I, tried making, I tried making the pitch this year. They said, no, I said, okay, well next year, <laughs> no excuses. I, I've seen your scout reports. You got a chance on that side, man. I don't know if anybody will listen to you when you coach them, but I do know your scout reports will be prepared. Three point shooting contest. Uh, me against not DJ, not DJ. Maybe. <laughs> Hold up, <laughs> probably I'm not a JJ. Probably, I won't be JJ either. But give me a a, shoot, a punch of chance against JJ. Three point shooting contest. Next time I'm in Denton. Okay, I'll s- I'll, 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 I'll set it up. I'm I'm set it up. up. I'll set it I'm up. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, Coach. Uh, we appreciate you for joining us. Uh, for those listening on the podcast, leave us a five star rating and review. Uh, watching on YouTube, subscribe, uh, share, leave a like, all that good stuff. We appreciate y'all for joining us, and we'll talk to y'all later.